Nearly 100 Batong bar owners and staff gathered at Batong Bay Hill Resort in Phuket to protest the recent extension of official alcohol sales to midnight. The group says the operating hours of the entertainment zone in Phuket and Pattaya shouldn't just officially be extended to midnight, but to 4 a.m. They also demanded the government stop calling them restaurants. Under current COVID guidelines, only restaurants registered under SHA Plus guidelines can legally serve alcohol. So all the bands and nightlife open at the moment are operating as converted restaurants. It also comes one week after a celebrity lawyer walked into the Batong Bay Hill Resort and filmed the late night parties. He says that local residents contacted him because, allegedly, Batong police had not responded to their many complaints that the Batong Bay Hill Resort's bars and entertainment areas had frequently and noisily been serving foreign and Thai party goers well past the official cutoff time. Senior Batong police have been sidelined over the matter and banished to office duties at regional headquarters until an investigation into the allegations is completed. Pat Hong Tan Shinawat, the daughter of exiled former Thai PM Thaksin Shinawat, has repeated her call for supporters to vote for the Pua Thai Party in Thailand's upcoming general election. Addressing party members at her party's general assembly on Sunday, she said only a landslide win would do. Pua Thai is Thailand's leading opposition party. As the party's chief advisor on participation and innovation, Pat Hong Tan is pegged to become the party's nomination for prime ministerial candidate. Though she has not yet formally thrown her hat into the ring. Her aunt, Ying Lak Shinawat, was the Thai PM before May 2014, when the army staged another coup and installed the military-run NCPO. Fishermen have discovered the body of a man floating on the surface of the sea around 500 meters away from the coast in Nakhonsi Tamarat province in southern Thailand. The man's wrists and ankles had been tied up with ropes and weighed down with rocks. His identity remains unknown. The swollen corpse of a man around 165 centimeters tall and estimated to be around 30 to 35 years old was pulled to shore by police, doctors and rescue workers yesterday in Bak Pranang district. The team expects that the man had been dead for around one week. Local fishermen discovered the corpse while they were out fishing on Sunday. Tourism numbers are expected to increase after May 1st, when vaccinated travelers will no longer have to undergo any pre-travel or on-arrival COVID tests, and unvaccinated tourists will also be given greater options to enter Thailand. In the first quarter of 2022, a total of 444,039 foreign travelers entered Thailand, according to the Tourism Authority of Thailand. The figure represents a massive 2,000 percent increase of foreign arrivals when compared to the same period last year, but remains just a small fraction of the foreign arrivals who flooded into Thailand pre-pandemic. In 2019, there were nearly 10 million arriving passengers per quarter, compared to the 444,039 in quarter 1, 2022. So the first quarter results for 2022 are actually less than 5% of the pre-COVID traffic. Stargazers in Thailand will be able to catch an early morning glimpse of celestial alignment for the next few days, when Mars, Venus, Saturn and Jupiter align with a crescent moon at dawn over Thailand skies. The rare alignment of planets in our solar system occurs between 4 a.m. and sunrise today and tomorrow. Well, you've technically missed this morning. Stargazers can see the alignment with their naked eyes if you're up early enough, and the crescent moon appears nearer to Saturn, before drifting towards Venus and Jupiter as they appear in the sky. In another celestial once-a-year phenomenon, at exactly 12.16 p.m. tomorrow, April 27th, the sun will appear directly overhead in Thailand. So technically, no one will have a shadow for a brief moment tomorrow. Transferring money overseas? Sick and tired of the insane charges? Well, there's a new product to solve that problem. Try D Money on your next international money transfer with the best rates and no added costs. Go to dmoney.com. 
Elsewhere in the world, Beijing residents have been binge shopping as the city's biggest district began mass testing of all residents yesterday, prompting fears of a Shanghai-style lockdown after dozens, not even hundreds, of COVID-19 cases appeared in the capital in recent days. One district, home to 3.45 million people, has ordered residents and those who work there to be tested three times this week, as Beijing warned the virus had spread to the city for about a week before being detected. They're referring to the Omicron variant of COVID-19. Shoppers in the city crowded stores and online platforms to stock up on leafy vegetables, fresh meat, instant noodles, and rolls of toilet paper. In Shanghai, where most of its 25 million residents have been locked down for weeks, the main food supply bottleneck has been the lack of enough couriers to make deliveries to homes. Several major roads in the Malaysian capital of Kuala Lumpur have been inundated after a torrential downpour that started at around 3 p.m. yesterday. Images taken by the Integrated Transport Information System show heavy traffic battling through flooded highways and main roads on freeways and other low-lying roads in and around the city. Indonesia, the world's biggest producer of crude palm oil, is going ahead with a ban on the export of palm oil starting this Wednesday to address an ongoing shortage of cooking oil in Indonesia. President Joko Widodo announced the ban on April 22nd, set to run indefinitely. Indonesia produces 59 percent of the global supply of palm oil and is the dominant vegetable oil used to make cooking oil in Indonesia and other Asian countries. But the decision to force palm oil producers to now sell their product domestically at lower prices than they could get overseas has met with a mixed response. Economists are criticizing the ban as a misguided policy, claiming that a similar export bans of other commodities has proven unsuccessful. After an eight-year-long quest, a South Korean Queen superfan fulfilled his dream of honoring his late music hero, Freddie Mercury, by erecting a life-size statue of him on the popular Jeju Island in South Korea. Queen's music was banned in South Korea in the 1970s by then-military dictator Park Chung-hee. The regime deemed the British rock band's music unsuitable and banned men from growing their hair. The man behind the 1.77-meter-high bronze statue is 57-year-old South Korean businessman Baek Soo-yeop. Soon-yup used to illegally listen to pirate copies of Freddie and Queen's music as a teenager when the band's music was banned. There's only one other Freddie Mercury statue in the world, located in Switzerland, where Freddie lived and recorded some of his albums.